It's quite a dreary day outside today, so instead of spending time outside, I'm going to get some work done inside the house. I got this idea from my friend Fiona over at Fiona in Her Kitchen. When you're done watching this, please hop on over to her channel and see what she's got going on. There's always something interesting happening in Fiona's kitchen. Welcome back to my kitchen, or if you're new here, my name is Stephanie and this is Ginger Snap Kitchen. The first thing I did today was make a marinade for my beef bulgogi. I've been obsessed with this dish for a very long time and I'm finally going to try to make it myself. And that started by shredding a pear. Ideally it would have been an Asian pear, but I was not able to find one of those. So I added the pear to my mixing bowl along with some reduced sodium soy sauce, yeah. some brown sugar, a bit of sesame oil, some finely grated ginger, a bit of minced garlic. This was garlic that I minced in my manual food processor the day before, placed into a mini ice cube tray, and then put in the freezer. Once they were frozen, I had easy access to little cubes of garlic that were already minced and about the equivalent of one clove of garlic each. The last thing I added was some red pepper paste. Once the ingredients were well combined, I added one and a half pounds of thinly sliced beef. There we go. I don't buy a lot of beef, but I found a really good deal in this at Costco and thought it was a perfect opportunity for me to make some more Korean food. Once the beef was thoroughly coated in the marinade, I covered it and placed it in the refrigerator. I will not be showing you how I made this dish in this video. But I will tell you that it turned out great, and I will be posting a separate video for this recipe. All right, off to the fridge for many hours. After that, I prepared a few strawberries for my son to have when he returned home from school. I tidied things up yet again, washed my hands, then I remembered I washed a load of clothes the night before and forgot to take them out of the washer, so they needed to be rewashed. Does that ever happen to you? It happens to me more often than I'd care to admit. While I was down there, I grabbed some dish towels and put those away in my kitchen drawer. and I put away a few new wooden utensils that I had just hand washed. This is the only drawer in my kitchen that always stays organized. Looks to me like I need to reduce the number of items in this drawer if I want to maintain it. Next, I'm going to make some sandwich cookies to take to work tomorrow for my friend's birthday. I added a box of my favorite chocolate cake mix to a mixing bowl along with some oil and two eggs. I love this recipe because of how easy it is and how you can use any cake mix you like, not just chocolate. I gave it a good mix. Then I used a medium-sized scoop, which is about two tablespoons, to portion it onto my prepared cookie sheet. Sure, I don't need the parchment paper, but I have it and I'm not ready to stain this cute little white silicone liner that I have just yet. I made sure to leave about two inches between the cookies as I place them on the baking sheet. Once they're all scooped, I place them in a 350 degree oven for about eight minutes.
I allowed them to cool on the pan for a couple minutes before I removed them to a cooling rack. I've been trying to remember to clean as I go recently and it seems to be working, but instead of one big mess, I just have to keep cleaning up 10 or more small messes throughout the process. While they're cooling, I'll make some lunch. I'm going to make some rice and I can never remember the rice to water ratio, so I put it on a post-it note and stuck it inside my cabinet. I try to do a lot of little things like this to make my life easier. Once it comes to a boil, I will reduce the heat to low and cover it and wait 15 minutes. While I wait, I will cut up some vegetables that need to be used for my lunch and to prevent some unnecessary food waste. These tomatoes have a few days left in them, but uh, they look nice and vibrant and I thought they might be a nice addition to my rice bowl. I could hardly say the same thing about this avocado, which only had minutes left of usability. This is, however, a fresh hard-boiled egg. Next, I'm making some spicy tuna with a can of tuna, two thinly sliced scallions, A little bit of gochujang, which is a Korean red pepper paste, and some mayonnaise. This tuna salad pairs surprisingly well with hot rice and cold vegetables. Finally, I'm adding a little bit of shredded seaweed and some black sesame seeds. I think I've convinced myself that anything served on a Asian style plate eaten with chopsticks is delicious. This was no exception. I enjoyed this very much and I didn't feel too logy after having eaten it. It was nice and light. Once lunch was over, it was time to run the dishwasher. And take a look at my dishwasher. I did cover it with some peel and stick wallpaper. And I'm really happy with the way it turned out. There are a few air bubbles, but you can't see them on camera. Next, I think I'll do the refrigerator. It's um, kind of a big project and I need two people to do it. So I'm waiting for my mom to be available to come down and help me with it. And once that is finished, I will definitely let you all see how it turned out. I wish I had an interesting story to tell you while I wash these items that couldn't go in the dishwasher, but I'm at a loss today. But if you have any questions for me, please leave them in the comments and I'll try to answer them as best I can. I know I seem kind of mysterious because you can't see my face, but I'm not trying to be. I'm just shy. Next, I'm making the vanilla buttercream for the sandwich cookies. So in my stand mixer, I'm just combining some powdered sugar, some salted butter. I know buttercream recipes always say to use unsalted butter, but I just don't keep it in the house. And everyone seems to like my frosting, so I must be doing it right. Once that's well combined, I'll add some vanilla and a little bit of milk. I'm just stopping for a moment to scrape down the bowl to make sure all of the sugar is incorporated into the butter.
Now that the frosting's ready, I transferred it to a piping bag, which I placed in a drinking glass to make it easier to fill the bag. But before I start frosting the cookies, I'll take a moment to pair them to make sure each half of the sandwich is as close as possible in size and shape. It's not essential to use a piping bag to place the frosting between the cookies, especially since I am covering them with sprinkles. It's just fine to spread the frosting on with a spatula. What can I tell you? I like to use a piping bag. I mean, look how pretty that is. If you're going to use sprinkles, it's a good idea to squeeze the cookies together to force some of the frosting out the sides so the sprinkles have something to adhere to. And another tip is, again, if you're using sprinkles, to put the sprinkles on each cookie as you complete the sandwich. Because once the cookie sits for a few minutes, the frosting will become dry and the sprinkles won't adhere to the frosting as easily. Once the sandwiches are all complete, I'll place each of them into a cupcake liner and into a paper lined bakery box. And since I'll be taking these to work for my friend's birthday, I will decorate the box with her name, a few cute stickers, and a satin ribbon. Well, this turned out cute and it was a big hit. That's about all I have time for today. I need to get back to my laundry before I forget about it again. Thank you so much for joining me and I hope you'll come back and see me again soon. Thanks for watching.